would give pills to us to eat. We would never have to cook, and it would be perfect. She never learned how to cook, even though she brought up five kids and never really learned either. So <laughs> it doesn't look good for me. Tell me why you are wanting to learn to cook now at this stage. I want to be able to entertain when yeah. I have people over. Yeah. And if I eventually have grandchildren, maybe I'll cook up a storm for them. I think that's a great reason. I can't believe that Vivian is using her oven as storage. She's not an exaggeration from what her family said. Now, the first step for me is I got to see how she cooks on her own because I need to know where to start. The thing that I've chosen is going to be some French toast. And she said, oh, well, you're going to make French toast. I sort of went into a little bit of a shock, not knowing the first step, what to do. Do what you would think to make me some French toast. I, I would ingredients. think to go to a restaurant and order the French toast. <laughs> but I would you... never think to make the French toast. All right, just pretend you're not in a restaurant and make it. OK. All right. So what, um, do I take the eggs and put them in the bowl? I would say that would be a good okay. start. I've also heard that it's not good to eat the shell. She can't even crack an egg. Like, how am I going to get her to cook an entire meal? Should we put all of the stuff in here? Ooh, is that too much? All right, I'm putting it all in. Once I sort of got into it and I was like throwing things in with reckless abandon, I sort of thought, hey, maybe this isn't so hard. I can do it. It has to be edible. We have to eat it. She's free pouring ground cloves into the French toast. That is just so wrong. Oh, look, I got two pans. Now, they've got spider webs in them. <laughs> Very scary now. Hey, look what I found. That's good, I never too. That. Now, hit me with some heat. We'll do it high. I always see people putting olive oil in pans. That's the only reason I think maybe that's what we would do. Ooh, it smells like it's burning. A little bit. Maybe I should turn the heat down. I think this is a really good piece. There you go. But you can hardly wait. <laughs> this is a big moment for me. <laughs> it's a big moment for me. Trust me. The nutmeg with the extra virgin olive oil. <laughs> nutmeg is killing me. I think we need to, you know, work on a few more things. I'm sorry, but that was nasty. We really need to help you out. I was hoping to have something positive to say. I got nothing. I thought I was doing great. And then when she tasted it and she thought it was disgusting, well, then I, I totally lost all my confidence again. I really think that we need to share this experience. I think you need to taste this, because I, I, I think, think. No. <laughs> Such a big piece, forget no. it. <laughs> Look, did you what see you the piece I me? No, I'm taking a tiny Look bit. Look at her. You can't take a piece like that. You give me like, mm. You're right. <laughs> oh my god, I knew I should never even <laughs> enter into the kitchen. Vivian's biggest problem is her total lack of technique. She can't crack an egg. She has no idea how to measure. She doesn't choose the right ingredients. And she's all about cranking up the heat. You want to use olive oil where something is going to be savory. So because this was sweet, oh. you wouldn't necessarily go oh. with that. So I would go for either a neutral vegetable oil or butter. OK. I wanted to show you a little trick. Rather than tapping the egg on the side of the thing, right. which you get little shells, you just do a little crack there. And that way, the egg doesn't have as many shards. The other thing that I want to tell you is the spices. All the spices you used quite a bit. Yeah. So we had those three spices for you, cinnamon, allspice, and cloves. So typically, I would go for smaller amounts, like a pinch, because okay. they're really, really strong. OK. The other thing that I want to tell you is on your cooktop, uh, you want to use a more moderate heat, especially when you're frying something like that. If the heat's too high, it's going to burn. OK. Make sense? Yeah, I got to tone myself down when tone I'm cooking. <laughs> she is very helpful with her tips on what to do. So I didn't want you to feel badly about that. In fact, you know, you had some really good intentions. I saw some fearless potential there, so that's all good. But now we're going to work together. Yeah. My only hope with Vivian is to get her passionate about cooking. I'm going to get her past her fears so she can cook for her family and friends. I've got a little something in store for her, and it involves a lot of chocolate. I think we should get out of the kitchen now. How do you feel about chocolate? I love chocolate. Wow. Coming up, how can something that tastes so good look so bad? That one looks like you went to the park with your dog. And later, it's a battle of the batter. Will victory go to Vivian or the giant mixer? When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. 
My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. I am the father of a nine-year-old little girl and a six-year-old little boy. And I find fatherhood both relentlessly challenging and relentlessly rewarding. Both of our children came to us in amazing ways. My daughter is biological and my son is adopted. I love them both so much. From the morning when you wake up to putting them to bed at night and every moment in between, it really is so special. And boy, is it exhausting. One thing that I fear about being a parent is the future for my children because I think a parent's job is to protect our children but also prepare them for the world so they become good, kind human beings. But I'm also hopeful that the future holds a more inclusive and compassionate world for them. And I know that they're gonna make the world a better place. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home. What to expect when you're expecting a teenager. Hey guys, today we're talking about how to wake up your teen. And this works literally every time. Give kisses. Give kisses. Look. Give kisses. Give kisses. <laughs> You heard how loud that was. I know, I heard, that? I heard. It, 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 it wasn't you. Yeah. It was the... Is that bacon? You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Bacon. Wait. Communicate. Make your emergency plan today. Vivian is pretty much clueless in the kitchen. She puts all of the stuff in here? Ooh, is that too much? My tongue's still numb after all that spice she put in the French toast. <laughs> Nutmeg is killing me. My sister is useless in the kitchen. She's absolutely useless. But if my plan works, she's going to be ready to cook up a delicious meal for all that family who's been saying how terrible she is and what a disaster she is in the kitchen. I think we should get out of the kitchen now. Yeah. I think we should go on a little excursion. How do you feel about chocolate? I love chocolate. <laughs> Vivian, I want to take you to one of my favorite chocolate shops in the city. This guy, David Castellan, makes his own chocolate from scratch. He's one of the few guys who does it. Oh, that is so cool. I can't wait to see this. Oh, it smells awesome, huh? Oh, it's so good. 